Hello, I'm Mark Steiner, and welcome to the Mark Steiner Show on WEAA 88.9 FM, the voice of the community, and on the Real News Network. And it's our pleasure today to talk with Emery Douglas, who is the Minister of Culture in the Black Panther Party, one of the world's noted artists and, and graphic designers, who joins us here in the studios in Baltimore. He's made another trip through town. Good to have you with us, Emery. Welcome. Good to be here. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. You're looking good. Thank good to you. have you here. <laughs> you. So, so, you know, in some ways, it's almost can be almost more dangerous than books, than the printed word. The, because it's a visual, people see it mm -hmm. and they're taken by it and they're drawn into it. Yes. And because it hits you here mm -hmm. in your heart and gut before it hits you here sometimes, mm -hmm. so that it can become more dangerous than the written word. Well, you could, yes, and at, at, <laughs> and at that time, yes. <laughs> so did you ever, did you feel threatened by that? Did you feel threatened that you, because you, you had to have been, so many other brothers and sisters, inside the Panthers and other places were targets, you had to feel that in there. Oh yeah, we were always aware, and there were times when you got Cointelpro documents show why they had tried to do many different things to discredit and destroy uh, the operation, the artwork, the, and the newspaper that was the foundation of the artwork. I mean, the papers would come up wet when we ship them from point A to point B, and then uh, we'd have to get lawyers to make sure to go to the airport, that they weren't wet when we sent them, and have lawyers to identify with the comrades at the other end to make sure that they were dry when they got there, and and those kinds of things. And we were able to talk about that. Because this was a national paper. We're yeah, talking about. It, national. Oh yeah, the paper was taken by not just national; it was taken by liberation struggles all over the world. Uh, the ex-Vietnam uh, dra uh, draft resistors over in Scandinavia. Bobby Seale should go there and stay for three months. They were big men with the papers. And they used to sell papers all over in Scandinavia and Europe and all those places. Yeah. So the paper went everywhere. So now most people, before we come back to the, 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 the power of the art mm -hmm. that you and others create, most people left the Panthers really early. Yes. Right? The, huge, the biggest names we all Well, well you can say, yeah, biggest, you can say names. There were still those who stayed and those who left. And you could, I would say it and there was a high tide and a low tide. Like there was always, in any struggles, everything is not always um, this grandstand, you know, a lot of activity going on. Uh, you take opportunities with those times, perhaps to try to uh, in, 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 internally to enlighten and educate yourself more and develop new ways and processes of doing things. But unfortunately, because we were very young in age and, uh, and they were able to exploit our internal contradictions, the government was. Right. And, and so therefore, in the latter part, we imploded on ourselves in many ways. But throughout the whole process, there were always people coming and going. I would say there were less uh, downside of people coming into the party maybe around uh, 1975, uh, around in there, uh, uh, it became where well, you could say the apex and then you have kind of, right. yeah. But yeah. you stayed in, why did you stay in? Well, I, I, I lived in San Francisco. I wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but, but you, but you, but, but, I mean, you believed in yeah, yes. what yeah. the, the party oh, yeah. was saying. And, and people still believed in the party. I mean, then, even on the, on the downside, people believed in it. You know, I mean, they, uh, they, you know, they, they, they believed in what, what it represented, you know, because it still was serving the interest, but not on the grand way it was in before. But people still believed in it. Of course, yes. I mean, I, I was thinking about this. I, I printed this out just because I was mm -hmm. wanted to re see it again. Okay. Um, and one of the things I think that took not just black folks in America, but took a lot of people who wanted to really change this country and actually believed in, in a revolutionary movement back in that day mm -hmm. was the Ten Point Program. I mean, yes. If you look at the Ten Point Program, just think about it yes. today. Yes. Um, we want freedom. We want the power to determine the destiny of, the, of our black community. Yes. We want full employment for our people. We mm. want to end the robbery by the capitalists of our black community. Mm. We want education for our people that exposes the true nature of the decadent American society. We want education that teaches our true history, our role in the present day. We can go on and on. But it, it, the stuff in these 10 points. Mm -hmm. Irrelevant right now. Universally relevant because I just got an exhibit that's in Spain where I sent some prints over. And that was one of the things they want to put in there was the 10 point platform <clears throat> program. Huh. Same thing in Urbis and Manchester when I had an exhibit there in 2009. They blew it up wall size, <coughs> the 10 Pardon point me. platform program. So 
And wherever I travel, they, everybody, they still see that, identify with those points there. They can see the relevance to their own struggles in many ways and contexts today, even in Chiapas and with the Zapatistas and traveling out to South America and, and doing artworks and contributing there. You know, the youngsters can see the relevancy of the, uh, the 10 point platform and program. And that, you said youngsters. Let's talk about young people for a moment. Mm -hmm. Because back in the 60s, all of us who were involved in one level or another were in our teens and 20s. Yes. We were young. And you look at the people in Ferguson <clears throat> who are leading these demonstrations against brutality and mm -hmm. trying to do something different are young. You look at the, the dream defenders, mm -hmm. they're young yes. people, right? Yes. You, you look at the Latino kids on the border, mm -hmm. they're young people. Yes. All across America, you're seeing young people kind of standing up. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people of our generation forget that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Unless you, <laughs> in, unless you, uh, it, unless you uh, give them solidarity support, or when they invite you, you go and you be there and you listen, you see it and you observe it and you understand it. Right. Like myself, I was invited to the border, to culture strike, a group of young folks who, for five days, to learn what was going on at the border. Fabiana Rodriguez, young real uh, artist from the Bay Area, well known, invited me along with uh, others, 50 uh, uh, artists and writers and others to the border. And we stayed there for four, five to four or five days, went across both in uh, uh, Phoenix and in Tucson. And so you got the rich history of what was what was happening there. And so and with that being everywhere I've gone, I've been invited mostly by a lot of young folks. If I'm not, I request can to be able to go in and, and learn and meet young folks while I'm there. Same thing is happening in uh, when I was in Amsterdam. I met with young people who was challenging there. Uh, and same thing in Portugal, you know, in Lisbon, and going meeting with the uh, young brothers and sisters who were from uh, Angola, who lived in the in Suriname. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I that and I think that's important in terms of coming back mm -hmm. to this whole idea of your body of work mm -hmm. and the agitational quality of the work itself. Mm -hmm. It's taken on different forms now. Yes. Than what you were doing in the beginning. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that change? What do you think when you look at your work as, a, as an artist and a revolutionary, how you see that work of young people, and what do you think of the... Well, uh, of what, we I see, what I see is that uh, when they come to the presentations, is they, uh, a lot of them are from, who are artists are coming to see how they can integrate social mm -hmm. commentary into their work and to enhance it in a socially way and do stuff with it in that way. So, I, 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 so I, there's the link there. In, in, in the kind of sense that people who are younger generations, they see it and respect it for the context of what it was. But also, I still do more recent work, too. I know, I know you haven't yeah, stopped. Yeah, You're not yeah, done yet. Yeah. You're not done yet. No, no, no. <laughs> so how does your work differ now? And we'll put some of that so people can see it, but how does your work differ now than what it was when you it were? It really deal with the same issues, but you're dealing with it in a contemporary way. You know, I deal with still deal with the issues of, of, of the uh, government and politics and the president, Obama. I, you know, I, I criticize him in my work, very much so. I also deal with the uh, HIV AIDS. I deal with the health as wealth. Uh, I deal with the uh, education. You know, all those things are involved in the, the war, you know, drone warfare. I deal with all those things in, in the uh, Guantanamo, Guantanamo Bay. All that's in, in, integrated into the work that I do today. So, I mean, that... that do you teach? Well, I call myself not in a formal way, but I but teach by what way. I threw, yes. I've been asked to teach at a university, but I said, no, I would rather, this is a teaching right here. Right. Yeah, in an informal way. Yeah. But that is what happened back in your time when you were a black member of the Black Panther Party and Minister of Culture for the Black Panthers and doing all the covers and doing the cartoons and running the design of the paper. That is what you were doing then, too. Oh, yeah, because right? we call it each one teach one. Right. Where we taught each everybody who came into your cadres who work with you, who uh, may have uh, had artistic skills or something, or some kind of contribution, or wanted to make some, so you had to enlighten them to what you were doing and how to do it in the basic foundation, and, so, and, and because of, and uh, go go again of a sidebar, is in 1967, when uh, we were first invited to go to Cuba. I was supposed to have been the one that was going to go to Cuba. He, he, he knew it was sending me to Cuba. But Bobby said lobbied against me going to Cuba because we needed somebody to work on the newspaper. So you didn't get to go? No. 
<laughs> so therefore, each one teach one <laughs> become a very Did important. Did you get athlete. to go to Cuba during the day? No, I never got to go. I never got to go. Unfortunately, I, other Panthers went. Uh, George Murray, went, uh, who was the right. Minister of Education at that time, right. went in my place. But, uh, you know, but I never got to go to Cuba itself, no, no. <laughs> but I got to go, uh, you know, I went to China. I went to, when we took the delegation to China, after Huey Newton went there and asked him to send a delegation, myself and my son, Huey and another Panther, t had a delegation of about uh, 19 people, right, Panthers and non-Panthers, right, and, right. and uh, in for 31 days and traveled all over, yeah, yeah. So when you, when you reflect where we are now, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I was thinking, looking at some of the stuff that you had done some of the work that you had done and, and mm. the, over the years, and there's so much of it that pops out, mm. whether it's the, the pictures of the women selling newspaper or the pictures of young people in the community that you drew and mm. the pictures of the police. And I mean, it, it, I'm curious if during that time when you were drawing these pictures for the party paper, the Pan Black Panther Party paper, how did you, what was, your, what was the process you went through in terms of I mean, was it like what was going on this week politically? Was it something you saw that said, no, this has got to get out there now. This is on my consciousness, is conscious of people around me. I mean, how did you? It was a combination of all those things at any given time. But it was also list and it was also listening to the, the pain and suffering of the community. And you can see in that, feel that resistance and that determination in spite of that pain and suffering. Uh, so all that played into the images themselves as well as uh, sometime it was based on the 10 point platform of pro always in, in, in the broader sense. Right, but uh, right. I was given the green light to do whatever I chose to do. Once they seen, seen that I understood the politics, of course, they used to look at what I did at first to make sure I, I was in the kind of framework of what need, was to be done. But once they seen that, I was given the green light, except for there were occasions when they wanted me to draw specific images or do certain things. But 99% of the time, I had the green light to just uh, whatever I chose to do as an artist. And uh, that was always based on the, so the, uh, the politics of what was going on, the social concerns that were going on, or, or the different uh, things that we were involved in at, at any given time uh, would be reflected in the artwork itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, you had a, a tremendous contribution that you made to both the movement then, but you haven't stopped it and what's going on now. And I, I think that mm -hmm. it's, a, it's really important for us to think about what you did in terms of what young people are doing today mm -hmm. and the role that they're playing today. And I think that there's sometimes this disconnect. We think that, oh, you know, it, the, the, the serious revolutionary change in the world can't happen, that mm -hmm. didn't happen in 1968, mm -hmm. didn't happen in 1974, yes. so it can't happen in mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. But it's this continuum. Yes that you're part of, that everybody remains part of. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's an ongoing process. And it, it, you know, like I said, there's sometimes things are low, sometimes look like ain't nothing happening. <laughs> you know, all <laughs> right. of a sudden, you know, <laughs> you have a whole leap <laughs> that takes place, yeah. Well, Emmy Douglas, yeah. this has been a huge honor mm -hmm. to see you once again in Baltimore. Uh, it's pr my pleasure to be here, and I'm and glad to be here. And coming, and coming to the Real News Studios here to do this for Real News and for the Mark Steiner Show. Right. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, linking to all the places they can see your artwork and, and even more. Uh, former Minister of Culture of the Black Panther Party, from the beginnings almost until the end of the party, and has never stopped his work. Thank you so much, Henry Douglas, for coming by our studios. Oh, thank you. Good Glad to be here.